All right. So we're going to make our way and get started today. Before we do official introductions, um, we want to share a couple of housekeeping notes for our webinar this evening. Um, to share with you, um, please know that we are open to questions. Um, so please definitely use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. We will be answering many of your questions live um, this evening. So most certainly add those there and we will take a look um, to get those answered for you. There will also be some opportunities to connect after today's session as well. So as you can imagine in admissions office, we are have the wonderful pleasure of working with students from all around the globe. We have a wonderful team who's ready and able to answer some of your questions, especially if we're unable to answer those today. Um, and of course, we have some upcoming opportunities um, in the virtual space um, that we will share with you a little bit later on. It's also important to note that this session is recorded um, and the presentation will be shared with you after today's session for you to take notes or to re um, to listen um, again. And in my 90 cents, I like to say rewind the VCR, rewind the VHS there. <laughs> um, but in general, please know that this will be recorded um, and it will be shared with you via email shortly thereafter the, um, this presentation. And of course, in general, we know that we have a mixture here of really exciting students who are active in their application process, whether you're applying to Skidmore as a first year applicant, as a transfer applicant, we are also working with students and know and acknowledge our students here who are active in their college search and beginning this process as well. Know that all of your questions are welcome. So most certainly use the Q&A to get us started here. All right. Thank you so much. So now that those housekeeping notes um, have been uh, have taken place, I would like to start off with introductions. Good evening, everyone. My name is Janessa Dunn. I am Director of Admissions here at Skidmore College, and I'm super excited to be joined by my partner in crime here, Jess Ricker. Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Jess Ricker. I use she, her pronouns, and I am VP for Enrollment and Dean of Admissions and Financial Aid here at Skidmore. Excited to be here with you tonight, whether you're listening through earbuds while you, you know, are kind of cozied up in an evening or, you know, maybe you're you're listening on, you know, a morning commute or journaling, right? We're just really happy to have you listening in. So, Janessa, I'll turn it back to you. Absolutely, absolutely. So just as you likely expected this evening um, or morning or afternoon, wherever you are, we are going to have a conversation. We're going to cover quite a bit about the application process, but more so about how you fit within this process, what is meaningful to you. We're also going to touch on the college visit, whether you are exploring schools to add to your list or your hoping to find your home or to solidify your home in the next couple of months. And then, of course, we want to talk through some of the, 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 the behind the veil questions. What, how do we evaluate holistically? What does it mean to apply early decision? And of course, allowing the remainder of our time tonight um, to, to answer your questions. So again, I'll most certainly utilize that Q&A feature. Um, but to begin, we want to share a little bit about ourselves here. And so I'll actually pass it on over to, to Jess just to share a little bit about how did you land um, in this admission space um, and what, what keeps you going, what makes you tick? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Janessa, right, I think we've got these lovely young people, maybe even a few parents here as interlopers listening in. Um, but, you know, the college search process can be stressful and it can, you know, in, induce some feelings of, of panic and anxiety. And so, you know, in this sort of fireside chat, right, and we each have like a nice warm beverage, I've got a nice cup of tea, Janessa's got some too, right? Um, we really want to show the human side of the process. And as Janessa said, kind of, you know, unveil some of the, the mystery. Um, but it all starts with the fact that we're two, you know, human beings ourselves who had, you know, some different journeys. So I grew up in the Midwest. Any uh, students from Ohio who are here? Um, and I grew up in the shadow of the Football Hall of Fame and, you know, do really love football. But I wanted a college experience where... 
there was support for the arts as well as athletics and political activism and things outside of just football, right? And support for sports other than football. Um, so I really looked far outside Ohio, um, but I'm a first generation college student. I had no idea what I was doing with a lot of luck and financial aid. Um, I actually landed at a, at a great small liberal arts college, but you know, really felt like it should be more than just luck. There should be some intention and there should be people guiding, right? Um, young people towards choices that will, you know, propel them to what's next. And that's really how, you know, I became interested in, in this work. And, you know, I'm really excited, right? When a student says, oh, gosh, I'm not quite sure, like what's, what are office hours all about? I'm kind of afraid of the faculty because uh, I had that experience too. And I, I'm just really excited to share my experiences and what I've come to find and, 20 plus years in the profession with, with young people. So, but it's a little bit different than your story, Janessa. I mean, talk about, talk a little bit about uh, your, your path. Yes. Well, the similarities is that I'm from Alabama. We also care deeply about football. Football. Um, Lots of well. football, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. And so um, originally from Birmingham, Alabama, and a recent resident of the Northeast. And so um, making my way from a large public university where my passion and my desire to support students and families throughout the admissions process was nested in that wonderful community in Georgia, um, but making my way into other parts um, of the Southeast um, to land here at a small liberal arts college and um, something that I appreciate deeply, especially with the background in chemistry. I'm a, I'm a nerd. I love the weather. There was at one point when I was younger, I wanted to become a meteorologist. Um, still do in some cases with the weather we're having right now here in the States. Um, but there's so many wonderful aspects of having this ability to go deep into interest in academic, academia, while also understanding that I had this other side, you know, I love music, I was an oboe player in high school and college, and just being able to know that there is a space that supports both. Um, or multiple in this in that way. And so it was an incredible journey for me to make my way into different uh, institutional landscapes, but to also fully land here in the liberal arts space and how truly special um, that particular environment is. Um, similar to, to, um, to Jess's perspective here, I think it's really important to know that, you know, the level of support, whether that's financial aid or a high school counselor who was supporting you or community member, whether that's through an organization, faith-based organization, job um, in that space, that it takes a village to make your way here, right? Um, and so one of the pieces that we want to provide today is what do you do to make an informed decision? What questions you should ask? Because of course we are interested and we want to share skit more, but also at the end of the day, we want to empower you throughout your entire search process where it's applicable because ultimately we want you to land where you want to land, right? Um, in that space there. So to begin, you know, our conversation and to dig a little bit deeper, I think it's important to know from a high level, what are we looking for, you know, as a liberal arts college, as a school um, that that values the whole person, what are we looking for? So Jess, um, do you mind taking that first step? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, as much as people talk about artificial intelligence and, you know, the way that there's so much automation out there, I really feel like we're in a very human profession. Um, our job is not to put someone in a yes or no bucket based on a GPA or a test score, um, but rather I feel like I'm invited in to get to know you know, a unique three-dimensional person. Um, and, you know, that's hard to do through a computer screen, right? Have any of you tried to get to know colleges by just looking at their websites? And it, it, you can't always get the full sense. So, you know, in the process, we're looking at a variety of different components that are going to help us get to know the question I'm always asking myself is what lights this young person up? What makes them tick? Um, and, you know, that's something that we see through all the different components, right? So we have an application that gives some background. Um, you know, what's the family composition? Do you have siblings, extracurriculars and how, you know, how you spend your time? And, you know, when it comes to a variety of different 
parts of the, the application process, right? The extracurriculars, it's not how impressive they, they sound. It's, it's we want to get to know what your passions are, wh where and how you want to spend your time. And it's not about us prioritizing one over the other. You know, playing oboe in the marching band is, is not better than the young person who um, has family commitments, right? And needs to come home after school and take care of younger siblings because that's what's needed in your household. Um, students who have a part-time job or, you know, who really get involved in, you know, speech and debate. And that's really, you know, we just want to know what gets you excited so we can imagine how you might bring some of those attributes to our community, right? So, so the main components of the the application, whether it's the common application, the coalition application, the quest bridge application, they're all out there to elicit bits of who you are. Isn't that what you would say, Janessa? Absolutely. Absolutely. And every component works in unison. It's almost like a symphony, no pun intended with my interesting um, uh, music interest, but it's really important to know that they all work in sync. And I think one of the bigger questions and the most common questions that we receive is how do I stand out? Or, you know, is it my essay that made, you know, made that decision? Or uh, what was it about me? And I think it's really important to know that it comes in unison. It, there are so many other aspects that just work together, that complement one another, that are building blocks to, to show facets of who you are. Are. I always like to liken it to a pie. Um, and as you know, I'm from the South. I love um, some really good home cooking and I love to bake. Um, and actually in Ohio, I do a lot of baking too um, in that space as well. Um, and as we think about the application process, I liken it to a pie. Um, and especially as it relates to your academic interests, whether you are applying as a first year student or as a transfer student, that will likely always be the foundation of your application process. And um, it is a combination of how you have done, you know, and how you have performed, but also your interest. Um, you know, if you have an interest in the humanities, we may see a lean towards the humanities in your courses. Um, if you have an interest in engineering, we may see an interest in those areas, right? Um, we also, of course, consider different components as it relates to rigor of your curriculum. All of those pieces are part of that foundation, which I liken to the crust. Um, and if you're a baker um, in this space, this may sound very familiar, but when you're making the crust of a pie, you have your flour, you have your shortening and or your butter, you have some other pieces there, but not one of those aspects is standing alone throughout this process. They have to be needed together in order to, to have that foundation. Um, and so, for example, in the world where you have many institutions that are test optional, at Skidmore, we have been test optional for a few years prior to the pandemic in that space um, in total, but there are several who may require those, right? That may be a component of that crust, or there may be a, a process where um, where the, the application for a program um, is very specific. And so your crust may be a little bit thicker in that space. And so I think it's important to know all of those pieces are working in unison. But just as Jess mentioned, the part that makes you stand out is is the filling. It's the difference between a sweet potato pie and a chicken pot pie and a Boston cream pie. Those are all different <laughs> different pies, right? So you're making me hungry. <laughs> Is it clear that it's after dinner right now here in New York, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, all of these different pieces are different, and that is what makes you stand out. And so, Jess, can you share a little bit um, about, you know, how do you, how do you find what to share um, yeah. to a student? Is it one thing? Is it a big thing? What does that look like? Yeah, yeah, I, that's an excellent, excellent question. I really do like pecan pie, by the way. Uh, but, you know, I think, you know, in the college search process, I think it's very easy to to just jump right into the process of figuring out what does each college offer? How are each of the colleges unique and, and different from each other? And we get that question a lot. What distinguishes Skidmore from other colleges? But if I can flip that, just remember, we're, we're trying to do the same thing when we read applications from, you know, the thousands of students that we get to meet in the application review process every year. So, you know, I think what 
really stands out is when a student has spent a little bit of time in the process getting to know themselves, right? So sure, you want to get to know all the colleges, but students who have been really thoughtful about a learning environment that works for them, um, you know, why, you know, why did Janessa continue to play the oboe? I played the flute, um, but then I stopped playing the flute at one point in college. I started um, playing rugby and doing, right? All of those choices that you make, right? The why behind it. And if you can convey some of that in the application, right? When you think about the application essay, you can write an essay on anything and it can be an excellent essay. One of the best essays I ever read was about tofu. <laughs> A student wrote about um, her, you know, family is interested in, in a macro eating, you know, experience and how her dad would shape the tofu into like a turkey every Thanksgiving. And I learned a ton about her family, her belief system, you know, why they went sort of vegan and vegetarian and her thought process through all of that. And I mean, a, an essay about tofu, it was excellent. And I learned a ton about this young person, right? So, you know, when it comes down to it, the question you should ask is how you know, how is the admission team who reviews this, and usually there are multiple people who take a look, what are they going to learn about me, right, through this process? When it comes to the essay, I always say, if you had printed out your essay, and, you know, it was left behind in your pre-calc class, and it, and it didn't have your name at the top, that someone who kind of knew you would be able to read the essay and say, oh yeah, that was totally Janessa's essay. I totally know that's her spirit, that's her voice. Um, that's some of her story, right? And that's what we're looking for. It's not exactly the easiest thing to tell you what to do, but I think it really starts with self-reflection of, of who you are, right? Um, yes, I fully agree with you, Jess. It's self-reflection and also recognizing as well that it doesn't have to be a magnanimous moment in your right. life. It could be a slice of it. And, you know, one of my favorite essays that I've written, um, not written, read, um, is one where a student likened um, a gas station. If you happen to be from North Carolina or the Mid-Atlantic, maybe, you may be familiar with a gas station chain called Sheep. Um, it's like the equivalent-ish to a Wawa if you're from the upper mid-Atlantic area, not quite a Bucky's if you're from Texas in that space, um, not quite a Stewart's if you're here in upstate New York, right? Um, but it was an experience and the student likened their, their, their first trip to Sheets on a road trip. They were from Ohio, actually, um, and uh, to, to Walt Disney World. And so when I was reading the student's essay, I was like, wait a minute, I need to go to Sheets. Just the whimsy and the creativity and the excitement of, of going to a gas station convenience store was shared in this 650 word essay through the common application. And it conveyed to me how incredibly aligned this student would be who wanted to be a future educator for early childhood uh, in an early childhood setting. And I was able to pick up on that style of writing and say, you know what? I want this student in front of children. This student is going to be incredible as an educator um, and to have this sense of creativity. But it came from a, a place where they were on a road trip with their family. And this is something that caught their eye. Um, so just as Jess mentioned, self-reflection can be something that is important to you. And that's the piece about it. When you're writing these essays or as you begin to write these essays, especially if you're beginning the process currently or, or further along in your process, about 25% of it can give us context. The 70 of other 75% can be why is it important to you? What is it? What what does it mean to you specifically? And that is, if you've done that, you've done your job. Yeah. At the end of the day. Because the beauty is, right? You know, we we don't get to admit just one student, right, to our institution. I mean, you know, we are a residential liberal arts institution, and so we are limited by the number of bed spaces on our campus, right, to the to the class size that we could have on our campus. But you know, we love the artist as well as the athlete, as well as the activist. And and sometimes there's one person who does a little bit of each, right? Um, so you know, we don't want all. Let's let's talk about pie again. We don't want all pecan pie. Or or apple pie or 
Um, you know, we, we want, you know, all different facets of life experience represented. Um, and, and so that's sort of the, the beauty, right, of, of it, that there's, there's no perfect essay. There's an essay that reveals something important to you, right? It's one of the few points in the application where you get to really pick and choose what you want to reveal about yourself. But, you know, there, the, there's no one extracurricular or, you know, it's not GPA. I, you know, really, I think students are doing good self-reflection about places that would academically um, be a good match for them, right? A place where they can go and thrive, be a part of the life of the mind. Um, and so the majority of the applicants can do the work, right? So we get to pick and choose and craft and shape um, our, our community by, you know, creating something that is really multifaceted and all the unique things that, that you will bring. So, you know, especially if you are one of the seniors here who's sort of been wondering, like, what's happening once the application reaches our side, you know, we are really curious people who really love and enjoy getting to know sort of the the human experience and and putting all the pieces together it's like a puzzle right have you ever done a puzzle and you didn't see the picture on the front of the box and it's only when you start to get more pieces put together that you can see the scene you can understand the bigger picture and so it's really the case that when academic passions and your your previous experiences in the classroom and your extracurriculars and what recommendations and those in the community you know are are saying you know who you are in and out of the classroom and who you are as a friend right there's actually a synergy right where it the individual pieces take on a bigger meaning and i think that's the moment we're looking for that we kind of get okay i can see who this person might might become on our campus um so it's 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 actually really exciting if you're thinking about careers, right? It's it's actually a pretty exciting thing to get to do. We're always open for those questions, by the way, <laughs> as it relates to admissions and enrollment in so many wonderful ways. Um, so Jess, you mentioned so many wonderful things about all of the different components, and we've talked quite a bit about, you know, the holistic admissions piece of having different opportunities to come together to, to build blocks and to also present yourselves um, and for, for, for our students to present themselves in the application process. But they're also, you know, it's not always what we're seeing. It's also what, you're, what, what our students are seeing on the other side. And so, you know, one of the bigger pieces that we want to share with you this evening is, you know, what does it mean, you know, for you individually to approach, you know, a college visit, whether you are approaching it as a current senior who's applying as the first year applicant, you may be in your gap year right now where you're exploring and you're really thinking through where do I want to land in the next few months. Um, our transfer students who are looking at a space that makes sense um, and an alignment with their interests in that way. So um, Jess, can you share with us a little bit about what are those big buckets of things to yeah, keep in mind? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, again, let's go back to growing up in Ohio, right? Um, you know, go, go Cleveland Browns. Um, but also, you know, a lot of people went to Ohio State, you know, gigantic, you know, research university. Um, and, I, you know, I felt a little out of my depth when I said, I think I want to go someplace, you know, smaller where, you know, there are people who are intellectual and there's learning for the sake of learning. And I, I ended up majoring in English, but I took calculus for fun. Right. And so, you know, it was, it was clear to me that this large and in state institution may not be right for me. And Hey, if, if Ohio state is right for you and you're on this, this uh, webinar tonight, I'm, I'm so excited. Right. Um, but you know, it's, it's about being brave and maybe looking at something a little different, right? If you think you really want small liberal arts, you should go check out a larger research, you know, institution. If you think, you know, that you want to be someplace, you know, more bucolic and rural, go check out a place in the city. It can be as valuable in the search to find and discover something that maybe is not your jam, right? As it is to say, okay, yes, I mean, I can see myself at, at a place like this, you know, so I think you have to sort of you know, push your boundaries a little bit and sort of take off, um, you know, your your sort of, you know, blinders that make you think, right, that you're headed in one path in one direction. And I think the students who kind of question things a little bit and get curious, and we love curiosity at Skidmore, we really love that. Um, I think the other piece is that you shouldn't have to settle. We really believe in a do both mentality at Skidmore. You can be a neuroscientist and be a tremendous modern dancer, um, for example. And, 
You know, I, I think that you should think about your in-classroom experience, finding your community and your people in terms of friends and peers, activities. I mean, I think it really is a, a combination of all of those. Um, so I would start with that. And then I think, you know, as much as you can, if you can get to a campus, that's really helpful, but you can still get to know a place virtually, right? If, if the admission office happens to offer sessions where you can gauge with other students, it's probably the best proxy you have, um, you know, short of being able to actually get to campus and, and meet faculty and meet the students in person. Um, and those have been, since the pandemic, much more, much more available, hopping on Discord and talking to students, right? I think things like that, Janessa, are, are really, really helpful. Agreed, agreed. And and you've mentioned something that I believe it's really important to emphasize, and that is the being brave part. Um, being brave is, is one piece that centers your interest, but you're also, it's an active um, rather than a passive um, action um, as it relates to your desires to move to this next step and this next part of your journey. Um, and as we think about the college visit, and especially if you may have been to Skidmore's campus or another campus, for example, really thinking through, can you see yourself in this space? Is this community one where it, it, is it, am I going to have to force an experience or is it going to fully support me on this experience? And every interest is very different. You know, personally for me, I started in a large public university, um, over 20,000 students. Um, I ended up working and being a student at a research one institute university that was a private school, medium-sized, um, then a, a private liberal arts university, and then, of course, the liberal arts college. Every one of them had an aspect that I could align myself with, right, in terms of my interests, my academic interests, my, my social interest. And I also think about, as well, what stage am I in? And is this something that I want to pursue? Do I want to have a sense of openness? What does the community look like for me, right? It allows us to really think through, is this an opportunity for me to explore? And so one of the things that I, I most certainly want to emphasize is being brave, be open um, to, to go throughout this process, whether it's confirming a decision that you've already mentioned, or having the opportunity um, to 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 have something new come to your plate um, yeah. as well. I mean, and whether that you know means you need your own like you know a couple hype up songs along the way when you get a little overwhelmed by the eight million colleges and the number of emails <laughs> arriving in your inbox from colleges, um, you know, or doing some affirmations in a in a journal. I mean. Janessa is one of the most organized human beings I've ever met. It's very impressive. Um, and it's cert yes, yes, it is. Um, and it certainly is a great way to keep track of an overwhelming process, to break it down into bite-sized pieces, to keep notes on, on institutions. And even, you know, after a session, right, do you feel like you vibed, right? Like with the students that you met or the presenters for the information session. Um, and, and so that can be a really great way to sort of keep on keep on track of things. So um, one other piece of advice that Janessa wanted us to remind you is um, when you are doing inquiry forms and signing up to get information from colleges, be sure to use an email address um, that you are going to check or you can create a new specific one, right? You, you could have a Gmail just for right, your college search um, but it can be best to not use your current school email address because a lot of them have um, blocks on um, external outside of your school district. Um, and you don't want to miss great information. And you really don't want to miss the moment when we say, hey, your admission decision is live in your portal. Log in and, uh, and find out the admission decision. So I don't know if you have any final tips on um, on the, the the search process, Janessa, before we talk about a, a couple other components. 
Yes, just as was mentioned, as it relates to the search process, of course, use an email. Not only that, there is an expiration date um, to some of those email addresses as well, especially if you're currently in a gap year. You're like, oh, goodness, yes, I'm not lo no longer enrolled um, in my current school, right? And so most certainly um, to check um, your email address. And, and that's very, very tactful um, to consider moving forward in your process. But um, at currently, right now, I think is important for us to, to talk a little bit about the application review process. What does it look like to receive an application, to evaluate it, and also all the different terms, early decision, demonstrated interest, need blind versus need aware. There's so many terms um, to, to really dissect, but what does that actually mean for us who are overseeing this process? Yeah. Oh gosh, where, where to start? Um, which one do you want me to start with, Janessa? Let's go through from a broad perspective, holistic <laughs> review. Let's go through holistic review and, and how we actually make that decision. Yeah. I mean, holistic review really means it never comes down to any one factor, right? If, if we're going back to pie, because Janessa has clearly made me hungry, right? And we've got a pie chart of how decisions are made. There really isn't a formula. What we will say is that the, um, the way that the admission team reviews your ability to handle the rigor at that institution that is going to be the biggest slice of the pie, right? Um, you know, we want to make sure that we're bringing students that, you know, will be exciting for the faculty to engage and interact with, um, that you will be intellectually stimulated by the, the peers around you. Um, but first and foremost, we want to make sure we're setting students up for success. So if we see that a student isn't quite ready for the rigor at our institution, you know, we're going to have to deny that student. And that's a hard thing for us to do. We really are, you know, very human on this other side. But we know that's in the best interest of the student, right? But holistic review means we're taking all of those different pieces. It's that puzzle that I was putting together, right, earlier in the session um, and trying to get a sense of, right, what would you bring to our community, right? What is the authentic you that would, you know, create a multifaceted, we want a little microcosm of the world. We want people who, um, you know, who, who are from the states that are big on football, right, who know all about that. And then we want, you know, we want people from New England who like all those states have to share a single football team, right? Like, I mean, I know that that sounds like a silly form of, of diversity, but we care about that. And diversity comes in all shapes and forms. It's not just, you know, racial and ethnic diversity. It's expression of gender. It's it's your lived experience. It's, you know, having a different family composition, right? Whether that's someone who's grown up with, with two dads or that's someone who's grown up with, you know, a single mom who's like working two jobs, right? All of the different things that have impacted you in your life are things that you can bring to our community. And so, as I said, since we have a large proportion of the applicant pool who can do the work, we're looking at those other things about your experience that make you unique. And, and to me, holistic review is not looking at any one piece in particular, but trying to get a sense of who you are and shape an interesting community for other Skidmore students and community members to be a part of. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And as we think about the holistic admission review process, we know that there are so many other attributes that, that come into play. We have some students who are applying to multiple schools. Um, there are, as you mentioned, you mentioned AI, you've mentioned technology in some ways. Um, and you've also mentioned just the role of a campus visit. Does a student need to visit a campus to express their interest um, in that in a particular school, particularly at Skidmore? Yeah, yeah. I mean, not not at all. I mean, here here here's what we're really looking for. We would really like for you to be making an informed decision, right? And we know a campus visit is a great way, right, to 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 do that, right? Did you ever go away like to a week of camp and you were like, I just made lifelong friends by spending that much time together, right? But that doesn't mean that you don't meet friends by getting a little, getting to know each other a little bit over time, right? You weren't even in the same classes, but you know, you happenstance happen to meet, right? We really see making an informed decision happening in a lot of different ways, and we also know that there are a lot of tremendous students who, whether 
you know, you, you have a part-time job, a lot of family commitments, the institutions you're interested in are far away. Some students don't have parents who are able to get away and, and take them right to, to colleges um, for those visits. So we certainly are not expecting a campus visit, right? Um, but, you know, getting engaged by getting on our mailing list and doing the inquiry form, right? And, um, you know, taking advantage of those virtual opportunities, whether that's an information session, um, we were trying to create as many ways for you to get to know us as possible because we want to make sure that you kind of know what you're getting into, right? I mean, college isn't quite, isn't like a marriage, but right, it's like dating. You're not going to, well, we won't, we won't go too far into that analogy, but, you know, we want you to have a chance to get to know us beyond just, you know, a quick little bio um, before you make a commitment for four years, right? So that's why we offer all of those different, you know, things and, and you know, send view books out in the mail and things like that. Janessa, do you, do, are you kind of, I see you head nodding, so. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I fully did a, everything that you, you've, you've noted as a relates to, you know, really going through the process of understanding there's so many different ways and, you know, point and blank, getting from my, my hometown of Alabama to upstate New York, that's not, that's not easy, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, in that space, or, you know, if it, even for a student who is in Glens Falls, just north of us, who, um, who has a part-time job in the evenings, you know, it's, it's not um, something that we are requiring um, for, for our students, but we most certainly want to ensure that you have made that informed decision. Um, so that way it, it makes sense um, for you. In, um, in your interest as well. So another piece that I think is really important for us to talk through is the role of early decision. Um, there's so many different terms um, in general, early decision, early action, restrictive early action. Um, and here at Skidmore, we offer early decision or regular decision, no early action opportunities. And early decision is a binding agreement, which um, affirming that if you are admitted um, to Skidmore College via early decision one or early decision two, um, you are committed to enroll with us um, in that space. And so, Jess, can you share a little bit about why a student may want to consider early decision, whether that's at Skidmore at another institution? Um, and of course, noting back a little bit to financial aid, um, a little bit about what that could mean for us. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, if I go back to the dating analogy, are you all going to get upset? But, you know, lo love at first sight, right? You know, the movies make it seem like it happens all the time. And, I, you know, I think, you know, college love at first sight, right? Or even after, you know, 10 tours and, you know, reading, you know, the view book and all the, e right? Chances are, right, there's going to be more than one institution out there that you think you could thrive at. And that's actually an excellent problem to have. That's really exciting, right? But so many students feel like I have to have a top choice school. I have to have one place that I really, you know, want to enroll above all others. Um, and you know, that it does happen for some students that after a thorough search, right, and maybe because they've got a family that supported them, they've been able to visit campuses and all of that, they, they may be able to say, really, this is the place I really want to be. And that's the moment when a student should consider applying early decision. Um, but at the same time, I just know, like, love at first sight, right, doesn't happen for everyone. Um, now, the one challenging thing about early decision, and this was, I didn't apply early decision anywhere. Um, financial aid was a significant factor in my college search, and I couldn't afford to commit to one school, right? I needed to be able to compare the financial aid packages um, of all of the institutions that I was lucky enough to be admitted to. Um, now, that's in part because I didn't know, right, that one of the ways that um, early decision uh, sort of works with financial aid, right, is that, say example, for example, you applied early decision to Skidmore and we admit you and you get that exciting admission notification in your application portal. You're also going to get a financial aid letter that outlines the grant aid, whether there are any loans, work study and things that you qualify for. So you have a clear understanding of your financial commitment to Skidmore. Now, if that um, financial aid offer doesn't meet what you and your family feel is what you really need to be able to afford the institution, we will release students from early decision. And as a first gen student, I just had no idea any of this existed. <laughs> um, but it is true, right, that in some ways, right, 
if really being able to compare the financial aid offers um, is important, it may turn out that early decision may not be the smartest decision for, for you, right? Um, and that's something that you're going to have to talk about. It's hard to talk about finances with the family, right? I think that's one of the hardest things for, um, for families in the college search, right, is having this open and honest, like, well, how much money do we make? What can, what can I afford? Um, but I encourage you to have those conversations. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for those of you who may have joined us um, last week or a couple of weeks ago, actually, uh, uh, with our Director of Financial Aid, Beth Post, um, Beth shared quite a bit of information about the process of applying um, uh, uh, to, to skid more through need -based, uh, using need-based financial aid documents, but also the, the process of how to you do to actually um, to estimate your cost of attendance as well. So know that if you have questions specific to Skidmore, we are always open to have those questions on the front end, the back end, during during your process. Uh, we are here for you um, in that space there. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, so at this point in time, Jess, I think it may be great for us to, to share a couple of things, a couple of tips that we want to share with our students, but we also know that there are so many wonderful questions in our Q&A um, that we want to address, several that are skin more specific, others that are broad here, um, and we want to make sure that we, we offer some time um, to answer those. And so before we transition, um, I want to share a couple of tips um, that I would like to, to for, for you all to leave with um, above anything. And I believe that the bigger, bigger piece of this process is understanding that there are some aspects of the college application process that you can control and that there are some that you cannot. Um, at the end of the day, there are some that are beholden to the institutions, whether that's Skidmore or another institution, um, that are outside of that. And I think it's important for you to know what that means for you. What you can control, of course, is how you choose um, to share your story in a way that is authentic to you. Um, for example, in your personal essay, um, you have the opportunity um, in, in some ways as well, to think about your, your high school experience or your college experience or your gap year experience and think about what am I learning in this process, right? Um, what am I learning in this community service um, aspect? What am I learning in research? What am I learning in my part-time job? And what does that mean for me moving forward, right? Um, and so I think it's important to know that those are the things that we want you to keep in mind, also recognizing um, that there is a bigger process. And so control what you can control <laughs> um, in that space, um, but to also give yourself some grace throughout the process. We know how crazy um, this time of year is, especially as it relates to scheduling and demands and so many other pieces. Um, we have been through it ourselves, but also recognizing that it may look different for you um, than it did for us right now. We want you to extend some of that to yourself and for your um, for you to to do the same, you know, with your community who's supporting um, and vice versa. So those would be my tips to share. Um, Jess, do you have any to share as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, one of the, the hard parts, right, this is, this is a usually a really big um, sometimes equally exciting and scary, you know, step for, you know, a, a young adult, right, who, you know, maybe is going away from home for the first time. I mean, there, there's so much in this and there's also so much hype. I mean, how many, you know, movies right out there in pop culture are about, you know, college and, you know, the news media, right? It's, it, there's a lot of pressure, right, in, involved. And, you know, I think one of the the hard um, and and I really wish one of the hard things, and I, I really wish I had you know had had parents who went to college who could explain this to me, um, is that you know the admission decision um, that a student receives, it actually doesn't reflect the student or their self worth. It reflects the process at that institution, right? Like. If we have a certain number of bed spaces at Skidmore's campus, it means I can't admit all the amazing young people who would really be fabulous and who would thrive at Skidmore. And, and that that's a really hard part of the job. I mean, Janessa, I'd say at the end of the day, like that's that's a hard one and it weighs heavy on us. And Skidmore, we do, you know, as many amazing things as we can 
um, to have a, a, a wonderful and vibrant community. Um, but I think at the end of the day, right, when, you know, a student logs into that admission portal and maybe there's an institution that you really liked and the news isn't quite what you had expected, hold your head high, you know, know that through this process, you, you learned, you know, a great many things about yourself. Know that it's it's about what you do in college, not where you go to college that really matters. And as Janessa said, there, there's some things that are beyond your control, but it, usually it reflects the process at the institution, um, not you. No admission decision has anything to do with your value, your self-worth, or your potential. Um, and so I would say, you know, like the self-care that Janessa talked about, um, I'm a former yoga teacher on the side and just, just breathe, take some moments to pause and breathe, forget about the college search on a Friday night and just watch cheesy, you know, TikTok <laughs> reels with your friends and like eat too many cupcakes, right? I, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's so, um, it's so intense. So take some time to lighten up and, and really breathe. So um, let's see if we can lighten it up with some of the Q&A. Yes. Um, and, and you know what? I'm going to take the first one that came in about what if my documents are late? Do I send an email explaining my situation? Well, Skidmore has put on our website, we're pretty clear, like we've got a grace period. We've In our applicant portal, we've got this little message that just says, hey, we know that life happens. If things are delayed, you know, we'll, we'll work with you. And we actually say the application is deadline is just for the application. Everything else can arrive a week or so later. Um, so at Skidmore, we're very flexible. Um, not every institution is that way. Usually the website will let you know. And I'd say above all else, pay attention in particular to financial aid deadlines. Financial aid deadlines, really important. Um, but yes, um, we, you know, if you miss the financial aid deadline, don't just not apply, write to us. We really want to work with you and we have the ability to extend grace. So I'm happy to answer that one and assuage that fear. <laughs> yes, yes. And you just mentioned a note about financial aid and there are several questions in here about financial aid, particularly for international students. Are international students um, allowed to apply for, for financial aid and will international students be considered for scholarships? Um, I believe it's important to know that the answer is yes and yes um, in that space. And so one of the beautiful aspects of after applying to Skidmore College College, um, a couple of days afterwards, you will actually see um, a new check box um, appear in your application portal for you to submit um, what we call the ISFA, the International um, student financial aid form. And so it allows you um, to enter information for us to be considered for need-based financial aid as an international applicant. We also offer two uh, merit-based scholarships, the Porter Wackenheim Scholarship, which is designed for students who have a very strong and in, in, uh, deep interest in, um, in science and math um, in that space. And we also have a scholarship called the Filene Music Scholarship, which is designed for students who are very active in music, um, um, whether that's voice performance or instrumental performance. Um, both of those aspects are listed on our website, uh, but know that those are open. Um, to international students. Um, so I believe the next question that I think that may be helpful that I think both of us can answer, um, there's several questions about what makes Skidmore stand out amongst other liberal arts colleges? Um, and what are some key attributes of Skidmore that, that our students and parents should know? Yeah. So first of all, can I just say to the student who put in the chat that they were just happened to be eating sweet potato pie tonight. First of all, I love that. And um, Janessa, you got a got a shout out for yay sheets uh, in the in the uh, in the Q and A as well. Um, you know, so I think a couple things stand out to me. You know, when it comes to to Skidmore, we are a larger liberal arts college, right? So a lot of the liberal arts colleges are you know eighteen hundred, two thousand. Our student body is about twenty seven hundred. Um, we are in a major metropolitan area, so we're outside of Albany, um, but we're also, we're just a bit far enough, just far enough away, um, but we have our own city of Saratoga Springs. Um, and so Saratoga, you can walk to downtown Saratoga right from campus, and I really think it's the best of both worlds. We have a, a colleague who says, if you want some green space, but you don't want it to be totally quiet, right? You can see a little bit in the, the background here on the Zoom that we're in this you know, beautiful area, but at the same time, we're really connected. There are a lot of liberal arts colleges who don't have um, sort of the best of both worlds in that way, major metro area um, and great little, little city that we're in. 
I'd say the other thing, and then I'll, I'll turn it to Janessa, um, not every liberal arts college um, has, you know, the traditional STEM, humanities, social sciences, you know, arts and foreign languages. Um, but we have some pre-professional programs. We have we have business, right? Like that's not the typical thing that a liberal arts college offers. Um, and if you look at our top five majors, right, we have things like, you know, neuroscience and biology, right, which you might expect, business. And studio art, I mean, I challenge you to find a little liberal arts college that has such an array of, of different areas in the top five majors. Janessa, what stands out for you? Because we could probably do a whole webinar just on this, but we'll, we'll give you a couple more. Absolutely. I think one of the bigger pieces that I want to emphasize is the community. Um, it is a community that is so intertwined um, as it relates to the student experience, the faculty experience, the staff experience. And what, one of the reasons why I was drawn um, to, to skid more is being able to come into an environment where you, um, you are able to be supported academically, but also if, you know, when life does happen, what does my community look like? If something at home is bothering me, what does that community look like? And being able to have, to be quite honest, you know, that Southern hospitality that I can find in upstate New York um, in that space in Saratoga Springs. So, um, and also good food, y'all. There are a couple of really great Southern restaurants here um, as well um, here in the area. But I believe it's, it's a combination of many of those aspects in one place. Um, and so I think that's something to keep in mind. Um, there is a, another student here who asked, you know, where are the majority of our students from? And you'll find um, several students here at Skidmore are um, from the New England, Mid-Atlantic area. You will also see a large group or a larger group of students from out West, California, Washington State, um, Texas, um, so many others, Florida, Georgia. Uh, we believe it or not, Alabama um, in that space. And so it's really exciting, but beyond, you know, the United States, so many wonderful students from literally many aspects of the world. I think uh, one part of the world we do not extend to is Antarctica um, in terms of reference. Right. No penguins. We don't have any penguins. No penguins, but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, you know? And so it really truly is a, a, a community of scholars from all different different walks of life um, in a highly residential setting that has access um, to a, a, a larger city, which I love as well. And, you know, one of the questions was whether it's competitive at Skidmore. And I think one of the wonderful things, right? So, you know, at Skidmore, we believe that creative thought matters. If you've gotten any materials or if you've been on our website, you see that that's really the way, the way we see the world, right? And you know, creativity by its very nature, it's inclusive. It invites in different ideas and perspectives and point of, points of view. Um, and I think what that means for, you know, the overall community is that we're excited. We, with this do both mentality I was talking about, we have tons of double majors and sometimes they are in, you know, combinations that you just wouldn't expect, right? Um, but the students are really supportive, right? Of of what each other is is doing, right? So when, in November, one of the traditions, Skid Mania, right? So students will sing the greatest hits from, or perform the greatest hits from 50 years ago. You know, there were there were a bunch of athletes, right? In the audience supporting their friends who were up on stage, you know, doing all these amazingly musical, you know, things. So, you know, I really think that in so, so many ways, the just the very sort of nature of, of Skidmore and the way we sort of see the world, you know, invites a community that is really special, like Janessa's talking about. So yes. Absolutely. You have so many great yeah. questions. I can tell you we are not going to get to nearly all of them. And I, I'm just going to say really quickly, if you have a specific question, Janessa mentioned earlier that we are happy to be in touch with you. If you want to email us, attend one of our other sessions, and we can definitely answer some of those. But Janessa, let's pick a few more in the, you know, the time we have. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So you've touched on a little bit about the the, the nature of the interdisciplinary experience and double majoring um, and different things of that sort. There's another very important question that came through, um, which is how's the food? Um, <laughs> in that space. I know both of us are frequent 
uses of on-campus dining. So Okay. Okay. So chicken finger Fridays is a tradition. And I can say I've eaten my fair share of dining hall food over the years. I mean, it's legit that it's good. And I have a hard time deciding whether it's the mac and cheese or the chicken fingers. Um, But actually, um, just two weeks ago, there was um, an intercollegiate culinary competition that Skidmore hosted, and we took home first place. And there's a reason why, right? Like, you know, the food is really, really good. Um, And I, I think the wonderful thing is, you know, they can, you know, they cater to, you know, vegan, vegetarian, a variety of allergies, gluten free, I mean, every single cookie they make, totally vegan. (laughs) Um, So, I mean, there are just so, so many things that are so tremendous about the dining hall, Um, but it's definitely a big place of community for us. So. Yes. Ditto, ditto, and ditto. Um, And I would even expand as well. Um, We have cuisine that's representative of the globe um, in many different ways. And of course, as Jess mentioned, dietary needs um, in that space, Um, very high quality, um, but also very um, attuned to our students' needs and our community's needs as well. So happy to talk about our food all day long. And I've been on many college campuses, both of us have. Um, and I would say it is very hard to compete with Skidmore's dining um, in that way. So there are some pieces here as it relates to um, several questions about the application process. And so um, can we provide some clarity um, a little bit about need aware versus need blind admission? Um, we are a school that is need aware, but what does that mean, Jess? Yeah, yeah. So need aware means that an institution considers the amount of financial aid they have to offer and the amount of financial aid a student needs. Um, a need blind institution, and there are just a, just a I, it's more than a handful, but it's only like a couple dozen. Need blind means they don't actually consider whether or not um, you need financial aid in the process. Now, there's a little bit of nuance in that, right? So there are need aware institutions like Skidmore who will admit a student, and then because they have a finite budget, They will offer someone a certain amount, but they may gap the student. They may actually not provide the full financial aid that your family needs, right? So you should definitely, if you're interested in this, when you get the recording of this session, the same um, web page where you'll be able to find this report recording, you want to go back and check out the financial aid one and get all the details there. Um, but Skidmore believes that, right, we make difficult decisions on, on who to admit from a, a competitive pool. Um, but if we admit a student, we want to meet 100 percent of the calculated need um, that we uh, use the CSS profile, right? And then we use the International Student Financial Aid application um, if you are not a US citizen, but we meet 100% of the demonstrated need. And actually, you know, as students think about loans and things like that, right? Our packages are very heavy in grant and our students actually have less than the national average of loans when they graduate. Does that answer it in a nutshell, Janessa? That's super helpful um, in that space. And I believe, and, and I believe the biggest piece is to know that it applies both to um, our students here um, domestically in the United States and to our international yes. students. Um, we're meeting 100% of demonstrated financial need. All right, so there are a few questions here and I'm gonna try to wrap up to one big one um, or one that we can tie our bow here um, because there's so many um, that are helpful. Um, to... Their last bite of pie, Janessa. I know, I know. Sorry, the pie's all gone. Goodness, and it last was bite. My, my go-to is sweet potato too um, <laughs> in that space. Um, as it relates to some of the opportunities, you know, we have so many questions about, I want to know more about research. I want to know more about study abroad opportunities and things of that sort as well. Um, can you share a little bit about what next steps may look like? Um, to a high school student or to a transfer student at this point in time. And also at the same time, I'm happy to share those links in the chat. 
Yeah. You know, so I'm going to say the thing that you're probably hoping, right? I hope she doesn't say read the emails that we send you, right? But once you get on our mailing list, you know, even if you, right, because I'm overwhelmed by email as well. We all are in a society where we are inundated, social media, our email inboxes, all the things that we're doing, our commitments to, you know, our family, our friends, our schools, right? Um, But, you know, take a little bit of time, right, to just read a couple um, and in those emails, we're telling little vignettes and stories, right? Um, you know, if you read our series, right, one of the great things that we have at Skidmore, if you jump on our website, we have Skidmore Scholars for Science and Math. It's this really great great program with some, some summer research and internship. And it's for, you know, students who would normally have been underrepresented in the STEM fields, right? And it started with a National Science Foundation grant. Um, you know, if you are interested um in you know activism i mean you know really you know take a look at the student newspapers see what students are reporting about right there's some really great ways to get to know our our institutions so you can as i said earlier make an informed choice um janessa just put in the chat right a link to a page where we are constantly adding new events and i mean it's wonderful like to have this fireside chat with our our warm beverages although at the end of the hour it's cooling off um but you know get to know the students and if you have a, a graduate from your institution or your your high school right um your secondary school who's gone on to a college right ask them about their experiences you want to get outside of the reach of admissions too and hear what students have to say um those are a couple that i have janessa are there other other thoughts that you want to leave them with um for for next steps and and getting to know those those schools and making informed choices Absolutely, absolutely. And I will say we are open, um, you know, to have the opportunity um, for you all to come visit with us here at Skidmore to learn more about us. Um, we have several offerings that take place throughout the week. We also offer Saturday um, visits um, for those who would need to come on a weekend in that space. But if you're not able to physically um, arrive here in Saratoga Springs, we also offer virtual events um, as well. And so just as Jess mentioned, definitely click on the upcoming events um, link that was shared first, um, and you'll be able to have the opportunity to stay in tune with us. But if there are any specific questions regarding your application, regarding um, any specific advice, you know, how do I connect with a professor to learn more about this area? Um, we encourage you um, to check out our website. And so um, you will find that um, you uh, our direct contact information, but each of our team members actually has the opportunity to connect with um, with with students from around the world. And so know um, that we're happy to answer those for you um, as you're going and navigating through your process here. But without further ado, one, we want to say thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Yes, thank you for spending the last hour with us. Um, please know that um, the conversation does not have to end here. And so, um, and actually in a couple of weeks, we're hosting another webinar um, with our very own president of Skidmore College, um, Dr. Mark Connor, who is incredible um, in a lot of ways, but also incredibly insightful. Um, and we'll also be able to answer some of your questions um, as well. But in the meantime, don't hesitate to check out these links that we've noted. Um, and we are really excited to connect with you again soon. Jess? Yep. No. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope everyone has a great morning, afternoon, or evening. You know, stay, stay brave. Take some deep breaths. You got this. You got this. Wonderful. Wonderful. Take care, you all. <laughs>